we are opened up and good to go. So if you want to go ahead with your introduction of Coach Hughes, we can get this thing started. I appreciate it, Austin. And, and again, I apologize for being a minute or two late. Southern California traffic is not fun. Anyway, um, it is my honor and privilege to introduce John Hughes from Dixie State. He's going to be talking about some fundamentals of offense and uh, offensive line and gap and stuff like that, which to me is always exciting since we run the ball. So without any further ado, appreciate everybody being there. John, take it over. Yeah, what's going on, guys? Um, excited to be here. Appreciate the opportunity. Uh, this is my first time doing a Zoom clinic. So uh, we're in a smart classroom. We're going to be able to flip from screen sharing. And uh, if I had to draw something up, I got this whiteboard behind me. Um, but what I'm going to do is just kind of go onto my, my huddle where I've got my presentation saved. I'm going to share my screen here and, and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Um, I can't really see who, who all, who's all in here, but if you guys got questions, man, let them fly. We'll, we'll stop and, and let them go. But um, like I said, it's an honor to be here. I'm from Southern California. I grew up in Redlands, so it's awesome to be able to speak uh, something like this and, and get our name out there from Dixie State and uh, be able to go through that. So I appreciate you guys' time, what you do for the profession, and what you guys are doing for these, these players. It's, uh, it's a thankless task. Um, I do want to talk about our summer camps. For anybody that's, that's in the area, has guys that, that they want to get recruited. Uh, Coach and I were just talking about a 2021 recruit that they have. If you've got 2021 guys that are still out there, or, uh, anybody that's that's down the pipe, so 22, 23, that you think is a is a guy that can get some college attention, we'd love to see him on June 12th. We have a Maggie camp. Uh, there's going to be three different sessions, so you can log on, get online, and check that out. And we also have a seven on seven camp on June 5th uh, that we're trying to fill up, and we've got a lot of interest going so far. So uh, couldn't get through that without going through uh, through that. So we got some guys, tell them to sign up. Um, what we're going to be covering today, so going to talk a little bit about Dixie State, uh, my background, what it means to play offensive line at Dixie State, and the expectations that we have. We're going to cover general gap and zone scheme concepts and fundamentals. Um, we're going to talk about the front side and back side of gap schemes and, and really what that means as far as where you work, what you're responsible for, the difference between a full gap scheme and a breaking the gap scheme, which is something that we cover a lot here at Dixie State. We're going to talk about being able to adjust to movements from the defensive line and second level defenders, what that looks like. Uh, we're going to talk a lot and cover a lot of drills. Today, you're going to get my drill outlook. Uh, and we're going to talk a lot about some drill tapes. We're going to talk about some base fundamentals. And we're going to go through different drills that we do here every day. Uh, and then we're going to talk about GT counter. I've got the diagram and some film. And then GY counter. And then my favorite play in the world, powered down, which is more of a 23 personal set. So I'm just going to jump right in it. Um, I'm from California. I played at Humboldt State, which is unfortunately no longer around. Uh, they, they pulled the program there, but that's where I started coaching. From there, I went to Sacramento State uh, as a defensive assistant. I coached at Akron as a graduate assistant with the linebackers, uh, with Chuck Amato, who's uh, an East Coast guy. I coached with Bobby Bowd for years at Florida State. That was a lot of fun. Um, then I went to University of Colorado as the offensive line graduate assistant, worked for Clayton Adams, who's now coaching the tight ends for the Indianapolis Colts. He's probably been my biggest mentor in the profession. From there, I went to Western Colorado University in the RMAC, which is Division II, coached the offensive line there. And I was lucky enough to get hired on, uh, hired on here at Dixie State, and we are going in year three as a staff, our second year as an FCS program. So a lot of exciting things happening. Um, I, uh, I usually would, would take all this text off of the slide if I was just presenting in front of a group, but since I could share the screen, I thought I would just give you guys exactly what I give my players. Uh, so you talk about what it means to play offensive line at Dixie State, and I'm just going to cover this up briefly because I think it's important. Um, I really believe that it's important to give players clear and concise standards and expectations and, and what that looks like. So we talk about our objective, being able to embody the following championship offensive line play, being able to play with offensive line fundamentals, being able to live by our values. Uh, championship offensive line play means you're playing assignment perfect, fundamentally great, and you're finishing. They have the fundamentals that we play with, and you have to know the difference between fundamentals and technique. But our fundamentals are stance and start. You always have to have your feet apart. You have to have your butt down. So you have to play with leverage. They have horizontal and vertical leverage. So where, where my body is in relation to the ball carrier, you have to have your hands to the side and your eyes to the end point. Uh, and the values that we play with, I'm not going to read them all, but you got mentality, technique, body language, play fast, and we got a strength to finish. So those are the things we talk about as far as what it means to play offensive line here at Dixie State. 
And then again, just kind of building off what it means to be clear and concise with the standards that you hold your standards and expectations that you hold your players to. Uh, I'm going to give them this sheet and I'm going to make sure they understand what it looks like at practice, what it looks like in meetings, what it looks like in the weight room, in the community, in the classroom, and being on time. Uh, I make sure they are very understanding of what it looks like to be successful on the field. So what I'm looking for on the field, I want balance, I want range, I want leverage, I want recovery. I want you to be able to sustain through contact. I want you to be able to be physical, mentally tough, coachable, uh, have some football intelligence, which, which takes a lot on my part as well. And then finally be, be versatile. Uh, some things we ask our players if, if, if they're ready to play, if they're buying into the program, and as far as them being able to execute something from the scheme, from the chalkboard, from the playbook onto the football field, we ask them, do they understand the scheme? Do you understand the techniques and fundamentals involved in that scheme? Do you strain to finish? And how much do you love football? Because it's the details that are going to make you great. So we talk about those things all the time. I keep this out in front of them. Again, clear and concise standards, expectations. Um, I'm not going to read through this, but one thing that's really big out here at Dixie State, if you're playing offensive line for us, is, is uh, understanding the importance of finishing. And I take a lot of pride in making sure that this is a very clear and concise standard as well. So we talk about what it looks like to finish. I went as far as writing a whole freaking page on it. Uh, but if you're going to play here, you're going to finish. And we're not just going to finish on Saturdays. We're going to finish everything we do. Because if you want that stuff to show up on tape, you've got to coach it in drills. You've got to coach it in the classroom. You've got to coach it in the community, in the weight room. Uh, and it's all encompassing. So I'm not going to read through this, but I do want to share uh, how important we, we think that is. And we go through this multiple times throughout the year and make sure our guys are understanding of what it takes to be successful here at Dixie State. So I'm going to jump right into to the, the, the topic here. So the, one of the most important things I've learned as a coach and, and that I think is important to, to understand and to teach, if you're going to vary between running zone and gap schemes is to make sure that these guys understand the general difference between a zone scheme and a gap scheme um, and what that looks like. So we're always going to try to target double teams in the run game. That's the physical nature of what we do. But if I'm going to truly understand the nature of the play, I've got to understand the difference between the two play calls in general. So a zone scheme, I'm responsible for my front side gap. And I'm not really going to cover any zone scheme uh, schematics during this talk. I'm going to focus on gap schemes. But if I'm in a gap scheme and I'm on the front side of a gap scheme, I'm responsible for my down gap. So at the end of the day, if the defense is doing a bunch of Star Wars stuff and they're moving everywhere. I got to understand that if I'm playing right guard, which is what's drawn up here in this in this little diagram here, and the ball's being run right, at the end of the day in a gap scheme, I'm responsible for my down gap, which is my left side gap. And uh, gosh, as much as we try to make that clear, you'd be, I'm sure, I don't have to tell you guys, but you'd be amazed how many guys could just don't understand that coming in. All right. Some other things that I think are really important to understand too, uh, the difference between a full zone and a full gap scheme and when there's a break in the zone or gap. Uh, again, I'm going to focus on gap schemes. So in a full gap scheme, if I'm on the front side of a play, I don't have to be worried about anybody moving to the front side of that play. I can be completely concerned with my down gap, which means I can be very, very aggressive on the front side of that play. So my favorite gap scheme plays to run are plays that I would consider full gap schemes. So uh, guard tackle counter, uh, guard tight end counter, anything where I'm adding two hats to the front side of the play. Or we, uh, we started running a gap power, which we stole from North Dakota State. Uh, Kansas State, those uh, those NDSU guys, that's a that's a full gap scheme just by design. So um, whenever you're running a full gap scheme, you understand you can be very aggressive on the front side of the play. If guys want to move the front side, you can let them go. We call it pizza theory, right? Take one piece out of one side, add in the other. If I'm going to block, uh, if I'm going to just leave somebody on the front side, I'll go take that guy's responsibility in my down gap, and we'll be rolling. Okay, so there's also some breaks in the zone or gap. A traditional break that it's easy to understand is an 11 personnel power scheme where that tight end and tackle both have to block man assignments. So the, the front side tackle there would have to understand if that end crosses space, he would have to carry. For that three technique crosses space and a four down, he would have to carry. So those are some things we talk about. Uh, some other things while I've got this page open that I think are important, uh, and, and mainly I'm just going to cover one. I'm going to talk about blocking defenders on the angle that you found them. I, I got this understanding from the late Howard Mudd, who I was very fortunate to come into contact with here in the past few years before he passed away. Uh, but just understanding that when you're climbing to the second level, or even if you're blocking somebody on the first level, uh, depending on the play now, especially at the second level, not trying to establish leverage, to let that defender go where he wants to go, but take him further than he wants to go. Don't, don't try to have eyes in the back of your head. The, the, the running backs can make a play off you. 
So whenever we're blocking second level defenders, we try to block that defender on the angle that we found them. I think that's been really good for our guys and it's allowed them to use their athleticism. So moving on here, I'm going to talk about the front side of the gap scheme. Okay, so on the front side of the gap scheme, I'm responsible for my down gap. I covered that. Now our double team identification, you can talk about my points. You can talk about how many you can leave on the front side of play. Those are all things that we cover here in length. We don't necessarily make a mic coin regarding numbers. We just try to understand where we're working to and who I'm working with. So those are the two questions I ask myself when I'm targeting a double team. So we break these double teams up into post players and drive players. So if I'm a post player on the front side of a gap team, I've identified some type of gap combination, whether that's an ace back or a deuce back or a tray back. I'm sure we all have those, those nomenclatures that we give names to. As a post player, I'm trying to lift that guy up, obviously, in a vertical double team. Okay, if he's a thick shade, I'm just teaching my kids to go over and up by the chin, which I'll show you. Now, if he's a little bit thinner of a shade, meaning he's a little bit, he's lined up right or left to me and I have some room, now we're trying to use what we call a brace pop. And I'm trying to say, take that second step through the crotch. Okay, as a drive player, the player that's responsible to either take that guy laterally or vertically, depending on the emphasis of the double team, okay, versus a thick shade, you're going over and up by on the angle. Okay, if you've got a thin shade, we'll talk about using the gallop, and I'll show you guys some film of that meaning I'm covering a open gap with square hips and shoulders, trying to gallop with my high leg, high tempo, my footwork, and trying to make contact through the hip. Now on the backside of gap schemes, obviously I know this is really a, a big text box here. Talk about our pulls. Okay, when we pull here, we, we try to create splatter. So I've never taught, nor do I want to teach any, any pulling guard or tackle to log or kick out. They were always looking for splatter. So what that means is we're trying to make a meaningful contact wherever that guy tries to meet me. If he wants to spill me, that's fine. I'm trying to go stripe to stripe. If he wants to run upfield, shuffle, squeeze, whatever that looks like, I'm trying to go make a big time collision. So we have flat pulls and skip pulls. We've also added a shuffle pull with our A-gap power, uh, but we're trying to, again, make as much contact as we can at the point of intersection. Uh, one more thing that we've added here, just, just as we've developed here in the past few months, is a near foot, near shoulder pull, which I have a little bit of film of and I'll show you as we go, but it's still the same idea. They're, it's really uncompromising. So I'm not trying to play into any type of fit that the defense has given me. If he wants to spill me, that's great. I still want to take further than you want to go. Uh, and it's, it's a violent collision, whether that's with your hands or your near shoulder, it's non-compromising. We're trying to get movement. Okay, some other things that we're going to talk about. Uh, and, and again, I'm just going to buzz through the top part of this slide here. And I apologize for the text being kind of small. Um, but one thing I think that's, that's really good that I learned when I was at Colorado and has been very, very useful for us here because we do see a lot of movements on defense are what we call movement adjustment moves, all right? So you have to understand, obviously, the genesis of the play, whether that's a gap or his own scheme, but our movement adjustment rules apply whenever the defense is trying to move, okay? So they're really simple. If a defender is trying to come with me to the any point of the play, I'm going to take him with me. If the defender that I'm working for goes away, I'm going to get vertical right now in a hurry. Hey, if a defender that I'm working to comes to me, I'm going to attack and accelerate with both feet in the ground and both hands underneath. So a general rule of thumb when facing movements is that if somebody leaves, somebody's coming. Okay, there's indicators all over the place. We talk to our guys a lot about being able to have accelerated vision, getting your head up in your stance, being able to see everything going on. That plays into it a lot. Uh, but you're going to see some film here of movement adjustment and what that looks like. Okay, and then finally, we'll talk about gallops here. on the If you're working towards an uncovered gap on a target double team, the gallop backs has been really effective for us as well. Okay, so getting into some drill work. Hey, just some things about drill work. Uh, I, I think it must revolve around engage your base fundamentals. Okay, so again, our, our fundamentals I listed earlier. I think a drill that you do must have a practical in-game application and it must show up on film. Okay, the frequency of the drills that you run in practice must have a direct correlation of the importance of that movement within the offensive scheme, right? So I've been around some coaches that want to run a bunch of fancy drills because it looks cool. Uh, I'm more of the, the keep it simple, do a few things extraordinarily well, and just understand how those movements work into your base fundamentals and the technique aspects of the play. All right. Uh, the other thing, too, is, is I spend a lot of time in my meetings coaching the drills, watching them on tape, and making sure that they can explain in detail the objective of the drill, why it's important, and the practical application of the coaching points involved. Okay, so getting to the first drill, I'm going to show you. This one's kind of an everyday drill that we do. I've done it since I was. Uh, a freshman at Western Washington playing for Clayton Adams, who's coaching for the Colts now. It's just a, a simple bag movement. Hey, the order of operations, you're going to go through the bag with one foot, then back through with two, then you're going to pound it out 
and uh, and work forward and backward in meter, which is more of a protection emphasis. But just looking at it really quickly, and I apologize for some of these film angles. We got this new scoreboard this year, and, and we didn't realize that this box was in front. But when we start going out here now, we, we just got into practice. This is going to be the first thing that we do. And the first thing I'm going to ask these guys to do is just move through the bags and play with posture. So when we talk about posture, we're talking about knee, hip, and ankle bend. Being able to move your body in ideal distance with each step, okay? And just really being comfortable. I don't mind guys moving their hands. Hey, you see this guy going through right here. He's doing an okay job trying to bend his knees and hips, okay? And just be comfortable. All your cleats are in the ground, and you're just trying to play with posture and good run demeanor. Hey, he's a little high there. That's not a bad job, but they can really slow it down when we come through. Now, the second time through, we're going to say it's on the quick. Now I want you to move through the bags or the boards pretty quickly. So you get your feet up and down, you're rolling through. And again, it's just learning how to move your body like an offensive lineman. Pretty simple. Then we're going to come back and we're going to pound it out. So here I want all your cleats in the ground again. I want you to lower your body as your feet strike the ground. I want you to try to press those sits down, get the shoulders over the knees, and play physical, play with good posture and a good pace. So that's the run fundamentals of the, of the weave. When we talk about protection, we, we talk about forward and backward demeanor, and we'll also go through that uh, every day at practice. The next drill I'm going to talk about is foot, fire, and finish. Um, order operations is pretty simple. We're going to start in great demeanor. We're going to fire our feet, bring our hands, and we're going to try to finish with a shove. So some key, some key coaching points here is you want to maintain your basic fundamentals. You want to start ridiculously low. And most importantly here, and it's something I think is very important to teach, as well, it's lead with your hands, not your head. Lead with your hands, fire your feet, press your hips. So those are three things I'm going to say almost every time we run this rep. Okay, so uh, the practical implication here is the moment of contact in the sustain. So every rep you take in football, if you're ever trying to block somebody, in my mind, is going to have a stalemate at some point. Okay, this progression is going to teach players how to win through that stalemate. Now, that stalemate might be very, very small. If you're more powerful, you have better leverage than somebody. But you got to be able to fight through that moment of contact and the sustain. Some things that you can do off of this drill, you can relocate the hands. You can work what we call the steering wheel, where we're trying to take guys further than they want to go. And then you can work a push, or some type of push-pull or some type of release of pressure and being able to beat that. Okay, so what we'll do here is we'll start ridiculously low. Okay, what I want, and this isn't a really great look at it, I don't want, if you see this guy that's closest to the bottom of the screen, he's almost got his head down. Yeah, that's not it. I want to have my head up. Hey, the guy that we really want to watch here is to the right of me. He does a really nice job. I like to see his elbows tighter and his, his head up. Hey, but the main emphasis of this drill is to violently move my feet and impress my hips. Do with my hands, fire my feet, and press my hips. So you can see this guy that I circled here. He's doing a very nice job of gradually striking his hips, being violent with his feet, pressing his hips, and maintaining that leverage with his hands. Okay, so we, tr we call that shock absorbers. I don't want to move that guy so far away from my body where I can't control him. And I don't want to keep him so close to me like this guy right here where I don't have any control as well. I want to be able to control the body, have him an ideal distance away. We talked about shock absorbers, being able to control the block, but not out leverage yourself with that distance that those guys want. Okay, so this is a three whistle drill. First whistle starts to beat, second whistle starts to drill, and the third whistle you'll finish with a shove. So I'm going through. Again, the guy to the right of me is doing a very nice job. Leading with his hands, firing his feet, and pressing his hips. Okay, so the next drill we're going to talk about is brace pop. Uh, again, a covered player, the post player on a double team. It's a little bit of a thinner shade, meaning that guy's about number to number to me, or maybe even further away. Okay, so I'm trying to get my feet up and down, move my body an ideal distance, and bring that offhand powerfully from underneath through the flipper. I know guys vary on the flipper or getting that, that thumb up and that elbow tight. Uh, I believe the flipper is more powerful. I know a lot of guys have it their way. So whatever is applicable for you, that's fine. And some things that we'll do with this is we'll also work it with the Crowther. So I've got mostly Crowther film on this. Okay. But uh, you can talk about the practical application and the variations that you can work in those ideas. But the key coaching points is I want to move my body an ideal distance with each step. Okay. Thick first thin shades. Um, I've gotten really away from telling guys, you know, you got to take that really good six inch step. Okay. And then a second six inch step. Because defenses are going to move and guys aren't going to line up in the same positions. Furthermore, second level defenders aren't going to always line up where you want them either. And so just understanding the idea of where I'm working to and who I'm working with and how I can move my body and ideal distance and get myself in the best place to make that block. Obviously, you got to maintain a base and be able to exit the block as well. So some Colorado film here. When I was a graduate assistant there, uh, I, I believe this Crowther sled is one of the best things that you can do 
whether that's working gap schemes or zone schemes. But you see here, I'm making contact with that second step. I'm bringing the flipper powerfully from underneath. I'm maintaining that base, and then I'm exiting the block and striking the second level defender. Really important to keep that hip involved. One thing I love about the Crowther is if somebody's not putting out, that thing is going to turn. Really nice job here, just keeping that base, firing that foot, okay, and then working up to the second level and staying sticky at the second level. Some other things I like to do with the Crowther sled is just work Crowther singles. So, again, maybe you're a, a gap scheme player here and you've got a head up two eye, so, excuse me, head up two, okay, or your tackle with a head up four, okay, or it's a zone scheme as well. But being able to work this Crowther sled with single blocks, it really allows guys to understand where they need to place their hands and their hips. Lead with your hands, fire your feet, press your hips. This is something we'll do multiple times throughout camp, okay, even maybe like a Monday, Tuesday practice. But I like to line up next to it just so I can guide it, make sure I'm taking it with them, and just move it as we go. Really important here if you're making contact with your second step in hands, you want that second step in hands to make contact at the same time. But just different things to do with that Crowther sled if you're fortunate enough to have one. Okay, uh, going into the next drill, we talk about movement adjustments. Okay, so again, I'm going to talk about those movement adjustment rules I spoke about earlier. Okay, if he comes with me, take him with me. If, if the defender I'm working towards goes away, I get vertical. If he comes to me, attack and accelerate, right? And so it really allows you to go from, let's say, a guard tackle double team to a center guard double team on the fly when defenses are moving. Uh, and so I'm just going to show you a few ways to work those drills. Okay, the first thing we do here is just work into an uncovered gap. We call this a gallop axe. Okay, so imagine this being uh, an uncovered guard working against a zero nose on a center. Okay, or a tackle working against a three technique. I'm trying to cover distance with square hips and shoulders, make meaningful contact through the hip and strike to the second level. You see, you see it here again, this right foot now, I'm trying to tempo this right foot and get it up and down and make contact right there. Pad level's not great, but he's doing a nice job maintaining base through up, up the board here. Kind of went rapid fire here. I really like what he's doing with his hands. Probably could tempo his feet a little bit better, but that's a nice job making second level strike as well. Uh, you'll see his feet kind of get crossed up and he gets stagnant a little bit, so not a great rep. Here we are, Dixie State doing it. Okay, you can vary this up. You can go all four at a time. If you want to watch one at a time, it's, it's really easy to kind of change that up. I know the camera angles aren't great, guys. I apologize for not being able to see the footwork. Okay, but again, I'm trying to make meaningful contact through the hip. I want to strike when that second step hits the ground. I want my eyes under his chin and want to be able to climb up and strike a second level defender. So that's the gallop axe. I've got a few more clips of it. I'm going to fly through it. Again, tempo in the feet, being violent at the first level, climbing to the second. There it is again. I'm going to fly through this because I want to see movement adjustment rules. Okay, really quickly here, I'm going to show you what it looks like on film. So I want you guys to pay attention to this left tackle here, number 75. So we talked about that. That gallop axe, making meaningful contact through the hip, you want to maintain square hips and shoulders, and you really want to tempo that right foot. There we go. What we call a deuce back. The post player is doing a very nice job of trying to raise those pads, okay, and the drive player is coming through, contact through the hip, eyes at the second level. So that's a really nice job of executing that block. Okay, here, again, you're going to see this now versus not front with the left guard in the center. So the left guard is going to do a really nice job of galloping through the hip, playing with leverage and understanding where he has to get to on the second level. Really like how he's going through the hip and he's staying thick all the way through. Okay, now we're going to move on to a movement adjustment. Okay, so what I showed you earlier was working towards an uncovered gap. Okay, now we're what we're trying to simulate here in this drill, our defensive line stunting and moving, running any type of dog or pressure. Okay, so what I do is I line up two players. I tell the defensive lineman to slant this way. He doesn't know where they're going, okay? and he also doesn't know if this guy's trying to cross his face or if he's going to come right at him, so I try to vary the look up as much as possible. Okay? The guys that are working this drill with you are really important to get the right look. What this offensive player is being taught okay, is that when he sees him go away because he's working to the right, he's got to get vertical right now and try to cut him out of his gap from crossing his face. Okay? And this might be one of the most effective things that we've been able to do in the run game as far as going against movements. He goes away, I get vertical. I've got to have tight feet. I've got to have low hips. And I've got to be able to redirect on the fly. Same thing, we're working to the right. He sees that three technique go away. 
He's going to get vertical right now in a hurry. Same thing here, working to the right. This, this rep's not as good because my hips aren't as low. Working to the right, one, work vertical. This one is a very good rep. You just can't see much of it. But I do want you to see how violently he reacts back to his backside gap. Okay, so he's working to the right. That three technique goes away. Let's say it's a two eye. He's a center working to a two eye. doesn't matter. That guy goes away. He's going to get vertical because if somebody leaves, somebody's coming. And the idea is that I'm trying to cut somebody out of their gap. This is a pretty good rep as well. Working to the right. He goes away. I get vertical. Same idea here. He goes away. I get vertical. And again, you can change up this drill. If he comes with me, take him with me. Hey, he goes away. I get vertical. Here's a really good look at it. Hey, he does a really nice job in this picture. So does he and the center. So we're running duo here, which is just an ultimate gap scheme. We're running it to the left. You'll see guys working to their right and redirect. He goes away, get vertical. So watch this left guard here. He is thinking in his mind right now that these two guys are working a double team to number two, right? But post snap, we're seeing movements. So he's able to adjust on the fly and then work to his down gap when he gaps it. Really nice shot by him being able to get vertical and change his hips. Same thing here, gap scheme play. Hey, I want you to watch the left guard. So we're working a full gap scheme to the left. Hey, we're running counter. In his mind, he's working a double team here to him. Hey, he's going to see that guy go away. He's going to work vertically now to his opposite gap, try to cut number one out of his gap. So I just turned that ace into a deuce on the fly, essentially. And then we're still able to work to that backside backer. So again, you got to have tight feet. You've got to have a really strong understanding of the play. The other thing that's happening here as well is you can see the center understands that right now, as it stands, he's got to block back on that defensive tackle that's a wide three technique. Hey, but as he sees him go away, Number 45 wants to come with me. I can take him with me. I'm just cutting guys out of their gaps. Same thing here. Really nice shot by the right guard. Hey, that I got indicators all over the place. Hey, they were bringing two off the edge against us that night. Right, so I anticipate if I'm playing guard here that this nose is trying to cross face to the center. Okay, so I, I, I have indicators. I want guys to be clued on that. 41 goes away. I'm going to get vertical. 79 is not working to, to, to 41 initially. He sees 99 go away. Okay, if 41 comes with me, take him with me, but take him further than he wants to go. So if you're able to take guys further than they want to go as well as cut guys out of their gap, you're going to make a big-time gash. They're going to be short. Hey, not as pretty here, but it's the same idea. We're just running inside zone to the left. Hey, 68, he comes with me, take him with me. 79, he goes away. Ah, get vertical, just get a piece. Okay, so that's movement adjustment rules. Okay, the next drill. Let's see what we got here. I can't see the title. Okay, just working combinations, right? So uh, the base way that I've learned, and, and, and I'm always trying to find better ways to work combos. Uh, I don't think I have the answers. But the most effective way that I've learned is just to work two reps. Okay, line up the look you want based on the, the look that you're going to see from the defense that week. Hey, work one half speed. Make sure they understand body position, general body control, footwork, timing where I'm working to, who I'm working with, and then come back and run that thing full speed. So I got one good example here. We're working an ace back, work at half speed. I got the gallop backs. Hey, I'm teaching my center to use a big hand here. When he feels that leverage, I really want to turn my hips. Hey, so we work at half speed, feel the body control, feel what they're supposed to do, and then we're going to go 100%, make sure we got it, we got it down. And, and again, I'm always looking for better ways to work combos, but that's been the most effective. Okay, really quickly, you can talk about pulls as well. Just some ways to, to run pulls and just be most efficient. I, I found in my time that, that working pulls, you always want to find a way to get both guys reps at the same time. So um, I've lined up these cones. You can work skip and flat pulls, whatever that looks like, okay, and, and make sure that whatever run plays are involved in your scheme, you're able to work all, all three or four okay, from the same alignment so you can get as many reps as you can. So we can work flat pulls, we can work skip pulls, we can work tackle skips, and just making sure you're being efficient with the time that you're allotted for that drill that day. Uh, Lastly, on the pulls, hey, I, I got kind of interested in this near foot, near shoulder idea with flat pulls and, uh, and shuffle pulls. So that's just a couple of clips of us working it. Um, North Dakota State majors in it. It's just giving guys the ability to be violent with the surface other than their, their hands. Okay? So if you got a guy that's kind of timid because he doesn't want to stick his hat in there, which he's not supposed to anyways, you give him the ability to 
to strike with his shoulder. Okay, to get there in a hurry, to find your feet, bring your hands, and just bang that shoulder in there. It just gives you another surface to strike and give guys the freedom. Okay, so uh, I've got these double team drawings. I know you guys are probably pretty dialed in with what you call them. Um, I'm going to use the last about five minutes to talk about GT and GY counter, do some gap scheme plays that we run. Okay, we call our GT counter Tiger Leopard. Uh, this is the, the page that I give my guys. The diagrams, given the way, you know what we expect to see, I love GT counter because it's a full gap scheme, and you're pulling your, your backside guard and tackle. I know it's pretty common run play here. I think some things that are really important, okay, for GT counter are to understand: a, you have to have some variation between the first and second pullers, right? So we teach our first puller to work a flat pull, and our second puller to work a skip pull. Okay, the other thing that's very important is there has to be a really good relationship between the first, second, and the running back, right? We call that a waterfall relationship, meaning I want the first puller, the second puller, and the running back to almost look like the water is falling down a hill. Okay, and the timing's got to be really good there because you have to be able to read the play. Uh, the other thing is versus an odd front, hey, we've tried to play with this a little bit, uh, but a back back call's got to happen because I have to have I have to get a hat on this four. I can't let him run free. We've tried to push back to the will, do a couple different things, but I keep coming back to this the back back call. Here's a couple of looks at it. This is us against New Mexico State this year. Four down front. GT counter. So you got your deuce back here on the front side of the play. I really like what's happening with my left tackle. He's a, he's a true freshman. Hey, we, we know that we're working a double team back to number 80. Okay, but with this motion, we were alert to him vacating the box. And so I really like how physical we're trying to be on that on that two eye with how much time that we have with him displacing. I don't love the contact we get at the puller. Hey, but I really like the read that we get the second puller be able to take that thing inside. And when this play hits, fellas, it hits inside the second puller. So be very, very hard on that back, taking that thing inside. Only bounce it if the tackle gets spilled or the guard, excuse me, gets spilled and has to go outside. But if I'm going to rep this play 10 times, nine times out of 10, I'm going to try to take that thing inside the second puller. Here's another look at it, running it to the left against a four down structure. Again, we have a deuce back with 64 and 72. Okay, you got your flat pull trying to create splatter. I wish he was a little more physical. Okay, but a really nice job of our true freshman right tackle. Okay, finding his way through there, reading that box. We anticipated that box fit all week. Okay, getting pretty good movement on the deuce. Being able to uh, squeak through there okay, and get a solid gain. The other thing that's really nice about this scheme is you can do a ton with it. So the last rep you saw us motion out of two back. Okay, motion to screen out here. The other thing we love to do is attach the tight end on the backside and just arc this end. Try to buy yourself a little bit of time for the read, okay? And if he wants to freaking flow over the top and you just keep that thing, you've got a lead blocker. So I, I, I really think the variations you can write out of this are endless. And I'm not even going to get into the RPO game, but you could do a ton of stuff out of it. And there's a lot of flexibility within the scheme. Again, it's a full gap scheme. So you could be really aggressive on the front side because that three technique or that two eye here, let's say in this case, if they have some type of movement on and this guy wants to freaking play all the way to the front side of the play, I can let him go in this piece of theory. So I love it, especially against an odd front. You can be very aggressive on the front side of the play. Here's a few more reps at it. Want a little more contact there. Again, if they get spilled, take it outside. But when this thing hits, it hits inside. Okay, we saw this rep earlier with that gallop back through the hip. We whipped at the second floor there. Good movement adjustments. We saw that on film as well. Now we're getting to some odd fronts. Okay, so against an odd front, Again, the, the beauty of this play in my mind is the, is, is the fact that the front side tackle can be very aggressive. So we're running this play to the right. I can be very aggressive here. This is a really hard block to make. Okay, inside lever four eye, heavy shade on me. The beauty of this play is this. I can take two really great steps. If this four eye wants to play front side, if I had any type of movement anticipated here, again, I can let him go. So I don't have to come off the ball timid like you would have to on, on 11 personnel power scheme or anything like that. I can fire off that football. If he wants to play in this B gap, okay, it's on. If he wants to go front side of the play, I can let him go. Inside the second puller, the thing hits home. A few more clips out. I'm going to try to get to GY counter here, and then uh, my time's going to be up. Okay, so GY counter is probably my second favorite run play. Again, front side of the play is very similar. Only difference is this time I'm pulling that tight end instead of a tackle. So backside tackle, you're going to B gap hinge. Uh, the other flexibility you have is against the odd front now, rather than having to back back because I'm pulling the tackle, we teach this backside tackle to rake this four eye across the space and establish leverage. 
But again, full gap, full gap scheme, I can be very aggressive on the front side of the play. If somebody wants to work backside, that's fine. Hey, okay, we got formation of the boundary here, running counter to the field. Got a douche back on the front side, and my uh, left tackle completely overruns who he's working to. Oh, gets there late. Hey, but the, the one thing we talk about, especially with the fact that we're running some A-gap power here now, is that we're going to take care of that first level first. So I really don't mind him being late to the party at the second level because we are getting some big time movement on that front shade, which allows us to have some room. Yeah, the other thing that I found here too, and I, and I kind of skipped over this, we see a lot of mess charge, especially against our defense. And some things that I've been able to do is widen the split out front side, especially on GT counter. Dave, okay, you can kind of see it happening here on GY counter. Uh, we knew that these guys coming in this game were going to be screaming right downhill at this mesh. Okay, so I just try to buy our guard uh, gosh, half a foot maybe of room here. And then he's going to cheat his split pretty, pretty, uh, pretty hard too. The other thing he's going to do is back off the ball quite a bit to try to make, to try to shorten this distance he has to run. Uh, we, we've gotten to the point where we're really trying to be smart with our splits on this play and it's helped us quite a bit. Just a few clips of G T counter again, a four down front. Hey, we're getting pretty good movement on the deuce. Pretty physical. The first and second level, we're able to pop that thing through. But again, any of these big plays that you see, when this thing hits home, it, it hits inside the second floor. So don't, don't let those guys freaking bounce counter and uh, GT, GY counter. This thing hits inside when it does. When it, when it looks pretty, it, when it looks like that, you're, you know you're in business. Inside the second floor, get that, that <clears throat> deuce back in movement. Hey, if you keep that thing tight, they're going to have a really hard time spinning it up correctly. We're off to the races. So some movement adjustments here. 64 sees him go away, so he's going to work back vertically. Hey, 75, he comes with me, take him with me. Center, same thing. This guy wants to cross my face. Okay, bring it on. Not a lot of movement at, at, the, at the point of intersection as far as the pool goes. Hey, but when you're able to cut guys out of their gaps, there's a lot of room. When we were at Colorado, we got pretty creative as far as running with the quarterback, running with the tailback. You can get movement on that deuce, man. It's, it's, it's got a chance. You can even leave somebody unblocked at the, at the point of attack. Huh. I got this clip on here because I really like this left tackle, just working really hard to that down gap, just being really, really aggressive. Understanding this is a full gap scheme. Anybody outside the tight end is not going to matter. Hey, obviously we got lucky making him miss, but I really like what the left tackle was able to do. Here it is against an odd front. It's a tough look for this for this tackle. Okay? But again, what I like about the, the, the odd front is I can be very, very aggressive. If he wants to play front side, let him go. We got pizza theory coming on. Okay? But obviously, you got to have a tackle that's able to roll somebody out of that gap. Really nice shot by the, by the guard here. Gallup backs through the hip. He wants to overrun the play. That's okay. You turn and run him by. Take him further than he wants to go. Same thing here. Very nice gallop backs by the left guard. First pull or second pull. Inside the second pull when it hits. Okay, and finally, the best play in football is power down. 23 personnel. Hey, the ultimate gap scheme. This is what we run when we're in any type of uh, third and short red zone look. Okay. Um, versus an odd front, we talk about DBC, which is a deuce based cut on the backside. Versus a gap bait or any type of gap scheme, it's just a down, down, down call. If you get a, a base four down front, obviously you can target your double team similar to how you would counter a power. But on the back side, we're just throwing. Hey, on the front side of the wing, we're trying to just take care of our down gap. Really nice shot by this tight end here in the Brady one. Taking this guy further than he wants to go, getting some room. Not always going to be pretty, hey. but uh, again, so we, we talk about in this play trying to get lateral displacement. So I'm trying to get these two guys to get this guy going. I wouldn't mind seeing him movement adjust and work back, hey, but you're not going to complain when you're getting any type of lateral movement like this. If you can get this three technique of this two eye across the center's face, you're in business. Hey, this play's got a chance. I really wish my puller was tighter, but on this play, we're just riding the wave. 
we get a hat on the safety, we might be off the list. Last one here, not as pretty. This time they knew it was coming, so they're gonna they're gonna gap it up. That's okay. Down, 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 down. This wing number 69 is just gonna try to be as violent in that down gap as he can. And again, you're close. That backside safety over the top making the play in any type of third and short situation, you're gonna live with that. And that's the that's the presentation. How did I do on time? Right on. Very good. If anything early. Um, good stuff, coach. There's nothing right now in the chat or the Q&A, but if anyone does have anything, uh, please send it in immediately and coach will get that answered right now. Otherwise, uh, we'll give it a minute and we'll let you roll, coach. Yeah, I, I tried to fight through that drill tape. So if there's something that somebody wants to watch or, or look at a, a drill slide again, too, I can, I can go back to that as well. Coach, did you put your number up there for anybody who might want to call it? I did not, but let me, let me, uh, I will add that. Can I add that in the chat? Yeah, absolutely. Sweet. Yeah, I'll, I'll add that before we're, we're done. I apologize for that. No, no, coach. I, I love your double tight. That's about 80% of our offense. Yeah, Mr. Keegan. Go Jacks. Awesome. Hope your son's doing well. That's my phone number. Oh, still the 909, Coach. Any questions. What was that? Still the 909. Oh, yeah, baby. Not, not going to change it. So, Cal. Wait, where'd it go? <laughs> I was writing it down. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I just sent it again for you, Coach. You, what you have to do is you have to change that. It goes to not panelists, but the panelists and attendees. So I, just, I got it, Coach. You're good. Good stuff. Well, it doesn't look like there's any questions at this point. So thank you again very much, Coach. Uh, if there's anything else anyone needs, please feel free to reach out. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. My, my questions are all going to be individual. I don't know if anybody wants to hear them. So I'll, I'll give you a call and ask because I love what you're doing. I love the stuff. Uh, my questions were more counter out of your double tight. Okay, yeah. Unless you want to answer them now. I mean, if we yeah, didn't no see them, do you pull tight end guard or – guard tackle i mean you, or do you switch it up based on who you're playing and that kind of stuff yeah I, so it's, it's really just kind of depending on the formations that we want to go into the game with but um any type of 12 personnel stuff like there was some 12 personnel counter we ran when we were in colorado uh we really liked leaving that that front side tight end and our game kind of getting some room for that that front side uh on the play and then being able to platform bring that second forward through but as far as deciding whether or not to run gt or gy counter it's really, it has a lot to do, honestly, with that backside end. If that backside end is going to be a problem, you're probably going to want to run GY counter so you can handle that backside end with that backside tackle. Hey, if you can get some shuffle squeeze or some type of uh, delay from that end, then I love to run GT counter because okay, that gives me the ability to be really flexible with the scheme, do some things out with the RPO game and, and even keep it run some type of split flow action out of that as well. So there's some flexibility there. Um, GT counter is a little bit more of a hit or miss play. You're a lot more susceptible to negative yardage runs because you are pulling two from the backside. Whereas G Y counter, guard tight end counter, in my opinion, is, is a little bit safer. They're a little bit more uh, physical uh, and downhill. If I had to, if I had to pick between the two. I love it. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks again, Coach. Appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely. And I appreciate you guys for listening. I hope, it's, hope it was uh, productive. And I appreciate what all you guys do for the game and, and uh, taking time out of your own day to learn and, and uh, get better as well, which I know I can do myself. So really appreciate it. Great. Thanks, Coach. Yep.